good morning. So that was an interesting weekend. It is Monday, tomorrow Tuesday is when we are slated to transfer baby S. Yesterday, I, you know, go to church every Sunday and we're doing online church right now. And I, my entire church just, you know, the pastor was putting, was doing uh, the prayer request and she prayed for us and me and baby S. And it was one of the most beautiful things I've ever experienced. Um, and just the chat feed on YouTube, because we live stream it on YouTube, and all the people saying, joining in in that prayer was overwhelming and I just fell down and I cried and prayed. And I think in that moment is when something broke, something was just like, I don't know, maybe just an, an acceptance of what's happening. And, knowing that I did everything and then also knowing that he's going to be okay and that people are going to continue praying for him. I will always be praying for him. There's a little bit of hope <laughs> that he'll return to me. You know, you hear these stories about the foster care system and how, you know, they transfer a child and it doesn't work out and then they call you back and they bring him back to you and I'm honestly praying that that happens. But, um, that's where we're at right now. <clears throat> he is in the stroller. He's got his Milo kids. Milo or Milo. I can never remember it. I think it's Milo kids. <laughs> Hat on. Um, and then we're going to head to Starbucks. So let me pick up this dog, Dunk, and we're going to get to Starbucks. I need some coffee. So now here we are, <laughs> half a day before we're supposed to transfer him. And the foster parent who, in my opinion, I'm going to try and be really nice, <laughs> the foster parent who has the half-brother is now asking to push to Friday. I don't know why. Apparently she didn't understand or something like that. If you can't manage a transfer, can you really manage having two children in your home as a single person? I don't know. And you know, that's a little catty, I know, but that's, it's, it's like a snowball that's getting bigger of all the reasons I have stated to the courts why this person is not ready, qualified to take him into her home. But I fought, I've tried enough, I've done everything I could, I fought, I spoke up in court last week when I was not supposed to speak up and I spoke up to fight for this little boy. And here we're seeing the inability to be, to, to do the job. She's incapable, incapable, and it's frustrating. And I pray that this boy doesn't get lost in the system, doesn't get neglected, you know, at this new home. I did ask the social worker, I said, look, if you have, she's gonna remain a social worker. I said, if you're doing visits and you're seeing, you okay, buddy? Yeah, <laughs> you put your finger in your mouth, it's too far. I said, if you see that he's being neglected or not being cared well enough, are you able to like put that in your reports and request that he get brought back to me? And she said, absolutely. So, you know, if he's not being cared for, I have faith that the, the system, DCFS, his social worker is gonna take care of him and speak up and say, look, he needs to go back to where he was. And I told her, you know, 24 seven, any day of the week, I am ready, willing to go pick him up and take him back, so. So I, just got off the phone with the foster placement. I'm sorry about the, the noise, but he's watching a movie. Um, I just got off the phone with the new foster placement and I do feel a little bit better. The conversation got really deep, Ow, really emotional. I can't say I still support this. I, I, I support this because I don't support this but I do feel that much better that he'll be okay. I wonder if everything has been told to me 
truthfully about this situation, I very much do feel like, you know, he's been with me for four months now. I don't feel like this is being handled properly. I feel as though like he needs to be transitioned to her home. I, you know, it is what it is. It is what it is. Like, I don't know what else I can do. This man, little man, has a path. I hope that I've been able to touch him on that path and in, in influence his growth and development. But at this point, it's Tuesday. He's leaving on Friday. I'll transfer him. I don't know what else I can do. I've done everything I can do. There's part of me that wants to not do this ever again. There's part of me that wants to do this with an older child. There's part of me that wants to do this with a baby again. I don't know. Lots of things going through my head. No decisions need to be made right now. I just need to inquire about things. It's so interesting because I've been watching like all of the, hold on, let me pick him up. Oh, it hurts. Somebody's teething. Oh, baby. You hear that scream? That's the screams from his teething. It's horrible. Oh, okay. And you need a nap. So just rest. Just rest. All right. So yesterday was interesting. I spoke with this guy's... Uh, Papa, this guy's dad, and um, had an interesting conversation about, I don't know, like it's, okay. Today is Wednesday. We're transfer, trans, transferring him on Thursday. I wonder if I can do this. Oh, baby boy, I know it hurts. On, I'm sorry, we're transferring him on Friday. And um, I feel, at this point, I'm feeling better about the whole situation. I'm telling you, it's the weirdest thing because like all of the support from, of course I have support from friends and I have support from family and things like that, but there's been a lot of support from people reaching out on Facebook and Instagram and YouTube saying, Kevin, please don't give up, don't give up. I'm not, I don't know, like we live in a social media world and it helps me be like, okay, you know, I don't have to give up. Like this is hard and this is part of the process. You did sign up for it. Doesn't mean it doesn't hurt. And I don't know, there was just a little bit of a shift. I've heard so many people say, um, trust God, like baby S has a path. And I, and I know he does, so that, like I already, I know that everything will be okay. I still anticipate Friday being very difficult, letting him go and walking away. But I think it'll be okay in the long run. And I have talked to my agency and I told them, listen guys, keep me on the list. Call me for, for babies. I did raise the limit slightly. I said, let's go to up to age one and a half. I would do up to age two, but I live in a one bedroom. So you have to move into a two bedroom at two years old. So I would rather a little, even, even six months to, you know, be able to move if I need to move, if I take in a one and a half year old, you know, baby child. <clears throat> so, he's falling asleep, his eyes are like dozing off. Um, and I said, just call me for any baby, we'll feel the calls as they come. And, you know, we're not, we can't say that a baby's highly adoptable or anything like that, because you never know with these young babies what's gonna happen and we, we're always gonna start with reunification and we're always gonna, you know, go that path. And there's so many different twists and turns 
and I'm learning and I and I do fall back on some people I know and their experiences and how many placements they got you know and on their path and things like that it's not always easy to share this stuff it sometimes it's really hard I sometimes I face I fear so much judgment from people I literally thought two things along this path like since I found out that baby S was leaving two really hard things one the first thing was Am I enabling the system? Am I part of the problem? Am I by fostering enabling a broken system? It doesn't make sense, right? Because you would think like, no, you're fostering, you're doing the right thing. But for some weird reason, it just felt like you're part of the problem. And I had that conversation with a couple people and they basically told me that that's not true and it just doesn't even make sense. And they're right, you know? But I can't help the feelings and thoughts that come through my head, you know? It's what you do with those things. And then, um, the second thought was um, a little bit of embarrassment, like you failed. Like, he's being transferred, not because of me. <laughs> if they said adopt him today, I would. Like, but there's this sense of embarrassment, you know? Like, you failed as a parent. Again, I know that's not true, but it's a feeling, right? You can't help how you feel sometimes. And then also, um, What's kind of coupled with that one is like, well, if you bring another baby in, are people gonna think you're this like baby hoarder thing, you know? And and I've and I've I've had this conversation with people and just like been able to share with friends like that fear, right? And it's always been reflected back like, no, Kevin, no. And the one thing I need to remember is that I've never done this before, so. I'm learning as I go and I have to protect myself, protect the child that I'm in care of and move through everything as gracefully as possible. So it's Wednesday. We've got, you know, the rest of today, tomorrow and half of Friday together with this little man that is now asleep. All right. All right, so it's our last day with baby S. It's Thursday, he goes home tomorrow. He is over here just listen, literally listening to Apple Music. Um, I got all of his stuff packed up. Obviously, don't mind the George Foreman grill, giving that away for free to some, I don't know, I'm just gonna give it away. Um, here's all of his stuff. So we got, what am I doing? I just put like the bat last bit of diapers I have. These are, this is all formula. His little suitcase I bought him. And then these things, that and that are what he came with. Um, those are just stuff we never really ended up using. They've been put away. Um, so yeah, he's headed out tomorrow. You know, I am in complete acceptance of this at this point. I. I don't know what happened yesterday. Something just shifted in me and I just felt the need to like, let this go. And probably the conversation I had with the new caregiver, I think he'll be okay. Again, I don't support this move, but I think in the long run he'll end up being okay. So that's that. I'm gonna go, I gotta do some shopping today. I'm gonna go to the mall. Um, I have some pants I wanna pick up from him. I bought him some pants at like Target. So I'm gonna go do that, the pickup. And then um, my finger, I cut my finger and I had to go to the urgent care and I had to cut it open and it got pussy and I was screaming. They numbed it and it hurt. And I literally like went white, they told me. I was white and I almost passed out. But now it's starting to feel a little bit better. Um, but yeah, I'm on antibiotics. All right, I gotta get this day started. Okay, well, I am chilling here at a Starbucks in Montrose, California. I've got to go show a property, and um, it's like almost 5.30 p.m. on Thursday, and about an hour ago, things started to really, not really hit me, just a little bit. They hit me a little bit more, and it's a little sad. He is asleep in his car seat. 
Um, I don't want to go do the showing, but I need to. Um, and like, you know, I don't get to just stop working because things are moving and going on. I keep telling myself that, you know, there'll be another baby and whatnot, but no one will ever fill his spot. I don't see how things can get to a place where he, where I ever forgot him or anything like that. I know I won't forget him, but I don't know. So it's going to be really hard tomorrow leaving him. Really, really difficult. But it's got to be done. I literally don't have a choice. So we're almost there. Anyway. I am making some pasta right now. It's like butter pasta. Uh, cause I don't feel like doing sauce, but I just put baby S to sleep for the last time. Um, now who knows? He might return someday. You never know. But as it stands, it's the last time right now. And it was pretty emotional. I'm not going to lie. Very hard to do for me. I am going to be going to Palm Springs tomorrow with someone we are going to, I need to just get away. So I'm gonna to go to Palm Springs tomorrow after I drop baby S off. I'm gonna drive back here to LA because the new home is, a, the new home is about two hours away. We're meeting halfway. Um, and I'm gonna come back to LA, meet uh, someone here. And then we're going to drive to Palm Springs for the weekend and just to kind of like get away because I need a break. After everything with baby S and everything with baby L, I just need a minute to just like decompress, sit by the pool all weekend and, you know, just, I don't know, mourn the loss, the losses, but also acknowledge like the good in all of it. So that's that. I'm gonna eat, I'm gonna watch some TV, and then I'm gonna pass out. Oh, I gotta pack. <laughs> I gotta finish packing. So baby S is all packed, but I gotta pack, pack, pack myself. I gotta cut my hair again. I got a lot to do tonight. All right, I'll see y'all in the morning. Bye. We're at Starbucks for our last Starbucks run. I always say maybe last because you never know how these things turn out. Sometimes they return. Sometimes the little ones return to us when we least expect it. But uh, Michelle is coming to meet us with baby Z. And um, she's going to say her goodbyes or see you later or whatever it may be. All in all, we've got our bucks. We've got our little man. <laughs> and uh, just trying to have a good, happy, positive morning as possible. And um, move through this. I, I said to my friend here, Ashley, I said, uh, you know what? He moves on today and then the, the love continues. The love for another child just continues. And we'll keep doing this journey. So right now it's about nine o'clock. Uh, we drop off at 12.30. So I'm gonna hang out with Michelle. I think I might swing by Target after, pick up something and then go to drop him off. And then after that, um, heading to Palm Springs to relax. Just like decompress and feel all of your feelings. Yeah. Alright, so I am seven minutes away. I'm not happy about this. 
He's been asleep, obviously. You know, he always falls asleep in the car. Ugh. And that sucks more, too, because, like, he's just gonna wake up and be waking up the right and then... Take exit 24 beyond to grab gonna be waking up and he'll just, you know, go through this traumatic change. I wish I could, like, talk to him. Like, obviously I'd talk to him about what's going on, but I wish he'd understood. I just wish he understood. It'd make it easier. But, anyway, one step at a time. One step at a time. Oh, he's gone. <laughs> this is the f hardest thing to do. So hard. <laughs> I feel like my insides are being crushed. <laughs> I feel like they're being crushed. <laughs> but I told this woman how wrong this is. At the light, use the second lane from left to turn left. So I'm going home. I'm going, I'm going home. <laughs> And I'm going to do this again, I know that, but it's learning how to, I don't know, how do you bond and not attach and not get your heart broken. <laughs> oh, so hard. So baby S has left and we're headed to Palm Springs because I need just a little bit of a break. Just with all of the placements and everything being gone so quickly in like a two week span, I just need a break. So that's what we're doing. Viva La Palm Springs. I'm ready to vlog this whole weekend. <laughs> <laughs> right now we're having moments of happiness and no tears until the tears arrive. <laughs> 